Welcome back to the Men of Iron podcast. My name is Ryan. I'm here today with Jeff. What's up, everybody? And we are continuing our series on your family. Like, what is your role in your family? And are you doing that well, or do you have room to improve? And I think probably, if we're all honest, we could probably stand to improve at least a little bit. A little. And if you think a little, you're probably not being honest with yourself, honestly. Uh, So today we're talking about a big topic, I think, in how you handle your kids, like a man's kids, how do we handle our relationship with our kids? What should we be doing with our kids? And kind of like following up from our last episode, if you didn't get a chance to listen to that, you want to go check it out. Um, how can you be the spiritual leader specifically of your children? Uh, it's, it's huge. I think we definitely want to take this seriously. We want to do this well. Uh, so when you think about, um, your relationship with your kids, Jeff, like just tell us a little bit about like how many kids do you have? What's that look like for you? Yeah. And maybe what leadership over your kids with your kids, what it's been like. Yeah. Well, I have two, two sons. One is 29 and one is just about 17. Next week he turns 17. And so very different seasons of yeah. life. And that's something I think that is really important is understand and know what your kid's going through. Um, I'm a grandparent now, so that's a big deal yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So how, how I lead each of them is very unique to who they are and mm. what season they're in. Um, one's out of the household and one's in and all those kind of things. But I think the biggest thing since I have boys is how do I, how can I live in a way that's a good example for them to see what a Christian man's supposed to look like? It's so interesting when we talked last week about spiritual leadership, like so much of it is like, are you being who you should be? Because everybody will notice that. Right. Uh, I do want to call out one thing. Like if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't have kids, like I don't care. Listen, you're in the best possible scenario to understand your role and your responsibility with your kids before you have kids. Like Mm -hmm. there's so many people are like, man, I wish I knew that I should take this seriously before I got to this point. Yeah. So like, we definitely encourage you like, listen to this whole thing because it is valuable for you. Even if you're like a single guy that doesn't have kids. Yeah. And similarly, you, c- you might be an uncle. Yeah. You might be sure. a son. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's important stuff. So I think just to set this up, like you need to understand that if you are a father, any kind of like, if you're a stepdad, if you're a father, if you're a grandfather, like there is some level of importance to the spiritual import that you have in your kids. And it is so easy to assume that someone else is going to do that Mm -hmm. for you. Like it's so easy to think a teacher is going to handle that. Maybe a youth pastor is going to handle that. Uh, Maybe a church service is going to handle that. Maybe a grandma, maybe a grandpa. But if you have kids, you are spiritually responsible for raising those kids up, making sure they understand who God is and actually making sure that they know God and know their purpose. Like we talk about that in Men of Iron. That's what we want you to know. You want you to know God and know your purpose, but we also want you to help your kids know God and know their purpose. Yeah. I mean, I think of it like the, all those relationships you mentioned, they can influence your kid, but none is going to have the impact that you have because that's how God called you. You know, God called yeah. you to be that leader for your kids. Yeah. Um, what, what's that look like for you? How's that been in your life? How are you doing with that stuff? Yeah. I mean, honestly for Isaac, who was my older son, a lot of his life, I was really not serving God. Okay. So it was, you know, I had, he was born when I was 21. I didn't even know how to be a guy, let alone a dad. Yeah. (laughs) And, um, so there was a lot of trying things and messing up and, you know, my, some of my biggest things that I try to do was like, what did my dad do for me that was right or wrong? And how would I do it different? And some of those kind of things. So my barometer was a little off. Yeah. When with Connor, who's my younger son, we were serving God his whole life. And the ideas of what like good spiritual fatherhood looked like um, were way more clear. And I had a barometer then that I knew, you know, if, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? Like, what are the things I need to be better at? What should I change? And honestly, that doesn't mean that I did it right. Yeah. I I tried and I had a good example to look at in scripture, you know? So, you know, that's, that's some of my thoughts around that. I feel like it's important to recognize, like you might be listening to this thinking like, dude, I don't know, maybe it's too late for me. And like, it's definitely not Mm -hmm. like, it's never too late 
to take your spiritual responsibility seriously, it might be challenging. Like it it, be. it's important to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, especially if you have older kids and especially if like you have a background where you didn't do it well, like it's going to be a little bit harder mm -hmm. to have influence. It might be, it might feel like it's impossible to have influence, right. uh, but it is important to still take it seriously. Like it's not a reason to give up. It's a, it's a reason to persist. Maybe it's a reason to pray more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually really interested. Like if you're listening to this and you have thoughts on this, leave us a comment. Uh, down in the comment section so that we can follow up with you and actually just get a little bit of conversation going in the comments. Like what has this looked like for you and how do you feel you're doing in this? Maybe you have young kids, maybe you have adult kids. Like what have you noticed? That way you're not just listening to me and Jeff. You can actually kind of get a conversation going with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think like I've, I've been a youth pastor for a long time. I was a youth pastor for like 10 years before I came to Men of Iron. Uh, I also have four of my own kids. And one of the things that I've noticed um, that I would just love to, to highlight, maybe draw attention to, is a crazy common conversation for me was a parent of like a fifth or sixth grader would come to me and say, hey, you know, Mr. Youth Pastor, and actually call me Mr. Youth Pastor, but <laughs> you know, like um, they're just not into it. Like they, they just don't, they're not connecting with the service. Their friends aren't there. Like, so we don't want you to be offended, uh, but they're not really going to be around. And then a couple years later, uh, their son, their daughter's like maybe a junior, maybe a senior. And it's like, Hey, um, we, we, we know we haven't talked to you for a while, but is there anything you can do to help our student? And it was mm -hmm. like, you know, I really hate to tell you this, but like, we're going to try really hard to spiritually invest in your son or daughter, but it's like kind of too late. Like, like if you're just starting to take this seriously when they're like 16, 17, 18, like you're behind the ball. Mm -hmm. And the best thing you can do to spiritually care for your kids is make sure you're investing in them like when they are very young. And moldable. And moldable, right? right. Like when they want to hear. And what that's going to look like is you're going to be asking your kids to do things sometimes that they don't love, that they don't want to do. Guess what? Like my oldest son, uh, he is eight. He actually does not love sitting through a church service. It's, it's kind of difficult. It's getting better. Um, my, my next son is six, also doesn't love sitting through a church service. But we're like encouraging him to do that because we want that to be part of his life because we want him to take his spiritual development seriously. And like me and my wife, we want to make sure we're investing in our kids um, so that they actually do know what God's called them to do when they get older. We don't want to be doing like this crash course mm -hmm. like later on, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's really up to you to set the tone. Yeah. And your, your child's not developed enough to really know what the best choice is. Cause if it was up to them, oh, they'd man. be in the corner on a phone playing a game for sure. Right. <laughs> so I, I would always joke with people. Like, I don't know many kids that accidentally fell into discipleship. Like right. I, I don't <laughs> know many kids that were like, well, I could have played on my phone, but I decided to read my Bible instead. Like yeah. there might be some, but <laughs> it takes mm -hmm. some encouragement. Sometimes it takes maybe like a little bit of a firm push, mm -hmm. uh, but don't be afraid to read the Bible with your kids. Don't be afraid to pray with your kids. I know sometimes it feels like a little bit old school. Like it feels a little bit strange, mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's a good practice. It's okay to give it a shot. Yeah. And, and it's better to do the right thing to, than to be the cool parent. Oh man. That's huge. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, sometimes we get into this idea that we need to be our our kid's best friend. Yeah. And that's not the relationship it's supposed to be. Yeah. You can be friendly and share fun things with your kids and you should be, but you are not meant to be their best friend. You're meant to be the one that sets the tone that, that understands life and what God is calling you to do as a man. And you should be working towards that. Yeah. I always think the ultimate goal for my sons was when they are out on their own, that the lifestyle that we've set up for them leads them to naturally progress to loving God as, as their savior. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like how rewarding is it when it's like, it worked, like they yeah. got it. It doesn't mean there's not gonna be hard times. Yeah. It doesn't mean there won't be challenges. It doesn't mean there won't be faith crises. There probably will be. Mm -hmm. Um, but the goal is to teach our kids to know God and know their purpose so that they can do that with their kids. Like yeah. one of the, one of the best ways we grow God's kingdom is through our kids. Mm -hmm. Um, so we just really need to take it seriously. So what I was kind of thinking to do, this is going to be like a little bit of a crash course in what could feel like old dusty history, but I promise it's not. All right. So all right. hang with me. Um, God from the very beginning 
wanted fathers to take the spiritual um, development of their kids very seriously. And from the very beginning, God intended that fathers would disciple their kids, Mm -hmm. not the church, not the kid's pastor. Like dads are supposed to lead their children. So in Deuteronomy 6, there's this huge uh, commandment that is like, you need to know God. And God is telling all the people, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Some people think Jesus is the first person to say that. It's actually all the way back in Deuteronomy. And what he says afterwards is crazy. Uh, He says, I'm just going to read it. You must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, when you're getting up. You know what's funny about that? This is written to like ancient people, right? We still do the same things. Mm -hmm. Like we still have a chance to talk to our kids on the road, going to bed and getting up, Mm -hmm. tie them on your hands and wrap them on your forehead as reminders, write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates. So this is like, take this seriously. If there's any defining thing about your home, it should be the law of God. Mm -hmm. All right. So people start to do that. They start to take that seriously. And we have like this whole thing where Moses is leading the people. He's teaching the people, the law, Moses hands over leadership to Joshua. Joshua is going to lead the people into the promised land. And like, I apologize if you're not like, if you don't have a huge church history, you might need to go back and check out some of these stories because there's a lot here. But Joshua leads his people into the promised land. He's a leader who honors God. And in Joshua 24, he kind of gives them this charge right before he dies. And he Mm -hmm. says, listen, like you can do whatever you guys are going to do. You know, like people of Israel, you can go back to the gods that you used to know. You can go back to your old way of life. I don't think you should do that. I think you should serve the Lord. And in Joshua 24, 14 to 15, he ends on this note. He says, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's the spiritual leadership we talked about last week. Like, hey, I'm speaking on behalf of everyone in my home. Yeah. We're serving the Lord, no one else. And it speaks to our kids. Like we're going to teach them Mm -hmm. to know and follow God. And so Joshua leads his family. He hands over leadership. He dies. And we go into this book, the book of Judges. And the book of D- Judges is insane. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just wild. If you want to read crazy stories, read Judges. Right. <laughs> and what happens in Judges 2, this is nuts. In Judges 2, there's this short little line. So Joshua dies. Uh, and it says in Judges 2.10, after that generation died. So Joshua's generation. Uh, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. Mm. it's insane yeah that's crazy like think about the stuff they saw yeah so like these people saw the jordan river part like fly up into the sky they saw food fall from heaven they saw the walls of jericho fall just by like saying like hey shout (laughs) like they saw god do crazy things yeah and they never taught their kids about it yeah that's so sad isn't it dude oh my gosh and so you like the whole culture falls apart Like the book of Judges is insane. It's very dark. It Mm -hmm. ends up with the people of Israel going to civil war and almost killing each other. And so the lesson is we must take God's relationship with our kids seriously, our kids' relationship with God seriously. We have to lead them to follow him because no one else is going to do it. Mm -hmm. And when fathers fail their job, culture goes nuts. Yeah. I mean, I also say the reason why Joshua needed to say that was because the culture was already crazy. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, I don't care what else is going on. Me and my house, we're doing this thing. Like we're doing what God is asking us to do. And you know, we look around at culture right now and we see all kinds of crazy mess. If we get so wrapped up into that stuff, instead of what God is calling us to do, we're going to fall into the same trap. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very easy to fall into the same trap because you don't ever accidentally disciple someone. Mm -hmm. You you don't accidentally disciple yourself. You don't accidentally disciple your kids. You have to be really proactive about it. And one of the things that's interesting about this Joshua or judges two ten passage, they didn't even know what the Lord had done. And it's like, it's like a super tangible thing for us. Like I'm sure if you've been following Jesus for a long time, you can think of times in your life where Jesus had a huge impact on your life. Tell those stories. Yeah. Just telling those stories can have a huge impact in the lives of your kids and Mm. the lives of their kids. Yeah. Um, Just make a habit of being like, you know what? Like I was far from God and this is what happened. Yeah. And like Jesus broke through. I started to follow him and I know God is real. Like it's one thing to just like read the Bible, which is powerful. You should definitely do it. It's a whole nother thing to hear from somebody that you care about. They're like, Hey, like I actually saw God do this. Like this was a real miracle that happened in my life. Yeah. No doubt about it that actually firms up all of our faith. 
Yeah, because you can argue about scripture all the time. Like people try to disprove it, discredit oh, it, yeah. give all kinds of arguments, but you can't argue against life change. Right. Like that's the biggest thing for me is like, I know who I was. I know what God has done for me. And so if I'm not telling that story, then really uh, I'm doing a disservice to what God actually did for me. Dude, it's huge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's huge. And it's a very simple way to disciple your kids. So like, if you hear us talking about this and you're like, well, I don't know much about the Bible, like just start telling the stories that you know, mm-hmm. like just start praying with your kids. Even if you don't know totally how to do it, like maybe you're not sure how to pray, just start. Yeah. I can think of a couple stories of guys that I met at a couple of, uh, we, we run a man's game plan in like small groups. I can think of a couple different guys I've talked to that like at the beginning, it's like, it's like five or six weeks and like week one, they're like, well, I don't really take discipleship seriously. Like I'm not really spiritually developed my family. And it's like, well, maybe I'll read the Bible. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, let's start there. By the end of that sixth week, it's like, man, I'm reading the Bible with my kids at dinner time. It's actually been an incredible experience mm-hmm. and it wasn't that hard to do. You just have to do it. You just have to start. Yeah. Just start somewhere. Yeah. Intentionality is so important. It's such a key word around any of this. Mm-hmm. It's like, like we've said, you can't drift into like positive momentum spiritually. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. doesn't happen by accident. No, no. So I'm curious, Jeff, just in your own life, like what are like tangible things? Like what are things you've done uh, with your kids to help them take this seriously in their lives? Yeah. I mean, again, I, I go to the fact that you know, I have sons, so I want them to know what it's like to be a good husband. Yeah. I want them to know what it's like to be a good Christ follower. Yeah. And you know, I I don't hit home runs all the time with this stuff, but I really am working on it and they're aware of, you know, some of who I have been and where I am now and the progress and those kind of things. I think you kind of mentioned a few already, like praying with your kids Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, getting them into the scripture or, you know, one of the things that we do often is we'll watch a, a, a message or a sermon and we'll talk about like, yeah. what did you think or how did that affect, affect you and where you're at? And with Connor, who's a junior in high school, one of the things that I'm doing lately is kind of like, what are the scenarios you're seeing around you at school? And then how, how does the way that you have like created sort of principles and morals in yeah. your life, how does that impact that? That's so good. You know? Unfortunately, sometimes we get behind on that yeah. and it's like, okay, well, I wish I would have taught you that ahead yeah. of time. But the idea again is intentionality and really working towards something. I, I love that you're highlighting like doing it on purpose, being intentional. And I think one of the things we found in our family, it one, it doesn't always look the same way because our family rhythms are different. Sometimes we're in different seasons, stuff like that. But if you can pin down like one time a day, hopefully, when you're all together. And I know mm-hmm. for some people that can be insane. That can be crazy. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's in the morning. Maybe it's at night. Maybe it's right before bed. I don't know what it looks like. Maybe it's the dinner table. Uh, but just figure out like one thing you're going to do to help your kids know who Jesus is and understand like God's law, what, what he's commanded us and how we should do it. And what we do um, is one, like we pray with our kids a lot. Um, we have like this little kid's Bible. So like my kids are like newborn, basically like, like two, uh, eight. So like, we don't, we don't sit down with the English standard version and read six (laughs) chapters of Joshua. We have like this kid's Bible. That's just stories. Mm -hmm. And we just read through it in a year and start it again. And my kids are getting more and more familiar with the stories so that when they eventually do hear about who Joshua is, they know, Mm -hmm. like they know who David is. Like it's, it's so good for them. Yeah. Uh, Another thing we do, and this feels old school sometimes. Um, but you, I hesitate to say it, but you can do catechism, which is like an old school word, but it's literally just purposeful questions and answers. Uh, and we pick one a week and it'll be like, what is sin? And my kids are young. So like, like we use the new city catechism and it's like, uh, what is sin? It's a simple answer. Like a sin is anything that goes against God's will for humanity. Like it goes against God's law and we repeat it back and forth. And it does feel old school. Mm -hmm. It feels a little bit dusty and old fashioned, but they are learning so quickly. Mm -hmm. And the idea is uh, not to make them religious people, but make them people who love God. Right. We want them to know God and know their purpose. And we're not going to be able to do that if we don't spend time doing these things. Yeah. So it will look different for you. Like you're not going to mm-hmm. do it the way Jeff does it. You're not going to do it the way I do it. Uh, but just do something to mm-hmm. set your kids up for success because that Judges 2.10 thing, like another generation rose up that didn't know God or what he'd done. That's not just an old thing. Like that can happen. We're like one generation away from it. Yeah. We need to take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's so good, Ryan. Like I, I, I know that uh, a lot of times guys will feel like they're not equipped to do yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. And we talk about it all the time, but there, there really are some great things that you can do, even stuff that Men of Iron kind of provides. And that's like being in a mentorship yeah. where you're really talking about your family with your mentor. Those kind of things can really help spark you to do something. Mm-hmm. Like get it started mm-hmm. and uh, it's never too late. I think you know, we mentioned that, but just start. it's just so important. Hey, if you are, are here in this conversation and you want to know how you can do this, like reach out to us. Like we will get your message. We will answer your message. Just let us know uh, that you'd like some help in this and we'll get you in contact with somebody that can help you figure this out and flesh this out. Uh, we don't want you just to hear this and feel mm-hmm. like, well, I could never do that. We want to help you get there. So reach out to us. Uh, we'll be back again next week talking about some more family issues. We'll see you then. Thanks for listening to the Men of Iron podcast. If you enjoyed that episode, you can go to our website, menofiron.org. You can also like that episode. You can ring the notification bell or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. But again, thanks for listening to the Men of Iron podcast.